The upcoming A7V is expected to continue with a 33-megapixel full-frame sensor, similar in resolution to its predecessor, but with a key difference. This time, the sensor will be stacked. That detail alone changes everything. A stacked sensor allows faster readout speeds, reducing rolling shutter effects and improving both autofocus and burst performance. While some enthusiasts hoped Sony would push closer to a 40-megapixel sensor, that would bring the A7V too close to the higher-end A1, creating unnecessary overlap in the lineup. Sony has been careful about maintaining separation between its camera tiers, and keeping the resolution at 33 megapixels is a strategic choice that makes sense. It's enough to deliver excellent detail for large prints and professional work, while still being manageable for workflow and storage. In short, Sony seems focused on speed and responsiveness rather than chasing more megapixels. One of the most exciting expectations for the A7V is its autofocus system. Sony's recent progress in machine learning and AI-based subject recognition has been remarkable, especially in models like the A93 and A12. If the A7V inherits even a portion of that technology, it could become one of the most intelligent focus systems in its class. Users can expect faster, more reliable subject tracking, whether it's a person, an animal, or even a fast-moving vehicle. Eye and face detection are likely to be more precise and the camera should perform better in challenging lighting or busy backgrounds. Sony has also been improving how its cameras recognize different subjects simultaneously, switching smoothly between them without hesitation. Combined with an upgraded IBIS system for better image stabilization, the A7V is poised to deliver a smoother and more accurate shooting experience. While the A7V is expected to be faster than the A7IV, Sony will likely limit its burst capabilities to preserve the performance hierarchy within its lineup. Current information suggests a maximum continuous shooting rate of around 15 frames per second in RAW, which is a healthy improvement over the previous model but still comfortably below the A93 or A1 series. The buffer is expected to be modest, meaning burst durations may be shorter, but that's a fair trade-off to maintain the camera's mid-tier position. Sony's strategy here seems focused on balance, offering meaningful performance gains without stepping into flagship territory. Users who prioritize speed for sports or wildlife may still lean toward the A93, while the A7V remains the versatile all-rounder most creators want. However, with greater performance always come trade-offs. The A7V might see some compromises in EVF features, potentially a lower bitrate, or perhaps a step back in resolution or blackout-free shooting compared to higher-end bodies. Still, these limitations won't likely affect the real-world experience for most users. Sony's EVFs have been consistently sharp and smooth, and even a slight downgrade from the A1's level would still feel premium on a mid-range body. On the video front, expectations are that Sony will slightly dial back the A7V's capabilities compared to the A1. This is partly to maintain segmentation across the lineup, but also because the A7 series isn't meant to be a specialized cinema tool. Still, the A7V will undoubtedly cater well to hybrid shooters. It should deliver crisp 4K video with improved color science, dynamic range, and possibly higher frame rate options for slow motion. The stacked sensor will also help reduce rolling shutter in video mode, which is a big plus for handheld or gimbal work. Heat management and codec efficiency will likely see refinement too, ensuring longer recording times without overheating issues. Essentially, the A7V won't be a video flagship, but it will remain one of the most capable hybrid cameras on the market, ideal for creators who need both photo and video performance in one compact body. rumors about a completely new body design for the A7V remain uncertain. 
Sony might stick with the A7IV's existing chassis, which has already been well-received for its ergonomics and usability. There's little reason to reinvent something that works, especially if it helps keep costs reasonable. The mid-range A7 line doesn't need a radical redesign. Functional improvements are what matter most. That said, users can expect small refinements, better grip texture, improved button feel, and possibly a brighter or more detailed LCD display. If Sony keeps the same body, it will make the transition for existing users easier, while still allowing for performance-driven internal upgrades. One of the more interesting details surrounding the A7V is the rumor that Sony had the camera ready long ago. Reports suggest the A7V was mostly completed, but its release was delayed intentionally. The reasoning seems practical. Sony didn't want to disrupt sales of the A7 IV, which continued to perform strongly even years after its release. The A7 IV's success gave Sony time to polish the A7V and perhaps integrate newer technologies like improved autofocus algorithms. That decision now seems to be paying off. The timing of the A7V's arrival feels deliberate, ensuring it launches into a market ready for an upgrade without cannibalizing other products. It's also worth noting how the A7V's release fits into the current camera landscape. The A9 III, despite its innovative global shutter, hasn't met sales expectations due to its niche appeal and weaker low-light performance. Many professionals still prefer the A12 for its balance of resolution, speed, and reliability. Meanwhile, Canon's R1, once expected to dominate, is reportedly underperforming too. This gives Sony a unique opportunity. A high-performance mid-range camera like the A7V could capture a large portion of the market, especially among creators seeking a reliable hybrid system without paying flagship prices. If priced near the A7 IV's original launch point or slightly above, the A7V could become a bestseller. Most rumors point to a release before the end of the year, which aligns with Sony's typical product cycle and recent supply chain activity. Pricing should be close to where the A7 IV started, perhaps a bit higher to reflect the stacked sensor and improved features. That would place it in a sweet spot for serious enthusiasts and professionals who want a robust tool without stretching to flagship budgets.